Hi, this is Angelique. Welcome to Themes in Ashtanga Yoga. This class is a restorative class. Um, it doesn't quite follow the same dynamic as Ashtanga, but I find it's a good complement if you're doing an Ashtanga or Vinyasa class regularly. Sometimes, um, like if you're sick or you're run down or you're exhausted, the kids were up all night. My kids are up all night, all the time. <laughs> um, or if you did an Ashtanga practice in the morning, and you just need something to loosen up your body after a day of work before bed. It's a great practice for the evening. Um, it's a good way to sort of bring your energy down, to relax, to open, and to loosen up, okay? So we're gonna start seated, comfortable cross legs, tuning into the breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, always checking in with the breath before you begin to move. The breath is the link between the awareness of the mind and the sensations of the body. So as you focus on the breath, you, you connect with yourself and the inner spaces of the self. Establishing a steadiness and an evenness to the breath. Feeling the earth underneath you. Feeling the length of the spine. Good. Opening the eyes. I'm going to start with a little eye exercise. The clock. So I want you to picture a clock right in front of you. Um, imagine 12, 6, 3, and 9. And we're going to follow those numbers over and over. Okay, keeping your head still, raise your eyes up to 12 o'clock. Then down to 6. Up to 12. Down to 6. Up to 12, as high as you can go. Down to 6. Don't move the head. Inhale up, and down. One more, 12, six. Neutralize, look over to three o'clock, and nine o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock. Don't feel goofy, three o'clock. Well, you can feel goofy, <laughs> nine o'clock. Who cares, right? Three o'clock, nine o'clock. One more time, three o'clock. Don't move the head, nine o'clock, and back to neutral. Now the head, lifting up, lengthen, and drop the chin all the way down. Lengthen the back of the head. Don't let the shoulders follow. Just the back of the head, reaching up and away to drop the chin. Lengthen up, and drop the chin. Lengthen up, drop the chin, and neutralize, ear to the shoulder. And other side. Ugh, oh, ear to the shoulder. Don't let the shoulder lift. And ear to the shoulder. Don't let it lift. Feel that stretch. One more time. And to the other side. Drop and circle. Drop and circle. And drop and circle. Don't let the ribs and shoulders respond. Drop and circle. All the way back. All the way back. All the way back. Good. Neutralize. Very nice. <laughs> Coming into the hands and knees. Cat cow position. Inhale, release the front body gaze up. Oh, sit there a moment. Let the front body drop. Exhale, rounding the spine, press. So we're not you're trying to squeeze so hard here. We're just trying to find all the spaces. Yeah? Inhale, release into the front body spaces, moving the chin away from the pubic bone. And exhale, lengthen the back body spaces, lengthening the tail all the way around to the nose, the back body. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. 
exhale. Now we're going to do circles. I want you to focus on circling the head and let the pelvis do what it does with the head. Don't think about the pelvis. If you think about the pelvis, you're going to throw yourself off. Circle the head, the pelvis will circle. Don't think about it. Do your best. And reverse, head the other way. Don't think about the pelvis. The pelvis will follow, juicing up the spine. Good. And neutralize. From here, coming through, lie down onto your back. Leave the knees bent. We're going to take the right ankle and put it over the knee. Let that leg fall. Yeah. Hook the ankle over the knee and let that leg fall into the external rotation. From there, reach through, grabbing a hold of your thigh under your knee and draw it into your chest. Keep your spine long on the floor. Avoid letting the pelvis round up and tuck as you draw the leg in. We're trying to keep the sacrum, that flat part of the back of the pelvis, down against the floor and just get a stretch in the hips. Yeah, you're going to feel it right through here. It's just like pigeon pose, only, you know, lying on your back. Good. The more you relax, the deeper the stretch. And release the foot to the floor. Switch. Take your foot down. Ankle over the knee. Let the leg fall away. Reach through. Clasp your fingers under the knee. Keeping the sacrum flat to the floor. Draw that ankle into the chest. So you're thinking of drawing basically the ankle right into the sternum space, letting the knee fall to the outside of the body. Good. Four, keep the spine long, the abdomen relaxed, stretching into that outer hip. One more. Good. Drop the foot. And we're going to take this leg and cross it right over. Crossing the legs all the way to the knees. Draw the legs in. Separate the feet and try to catch your ankles. And draw it down towards your chest. Two. Good. Let the bones of the legs fold into the hip sockets. If you're holding on to tension there and not letting it release, you might get this pinching feeling, yeah? So imagine your body like just the skeleton form and, and sort of ignore the muscles and just imagine that you're moving the bones with nothing in the way, letting the bones fold in. One more breath on this side. And take the foot down, switch, cross over at the knees, draw it in, separate the feet, pull them apart, yeah? and pull it in. We might get that little pinch on the inner edge of the hip. Try to pull away, drop, drop, drop the bone into the socket, and then draw it back in. The more you relax in the hip joint, the less likely you are to feel that pinchy feeling. It's not comfortable. So do your best. Just try the little things. Try a little more rotation. Try a little more release. Try a little more flexion, and see if you can make that sensation go away. If there's no sensation, just enjoy the feeling of the legs folding and dropping into the body. Good. And let it go. From here, feet wide, flat to the floor. We're going to do a gentle shoulder bridge. Keep the head and shoulders on the floor, arms pressing. Base of the big toe grounded. And press the hips up. Let the hips roll up and bring the chest over the chin. Two, three, neck is long, four, five, exhale down. We're gonna roll and bring the legs up to the ceiling. Hands on your back, but we're not gonna go quite as high as the full shoulder stand. We're gonna stop where the hands become a shelf for the pelvis. Let your hips 
rest into your hands, and then the weight of the legs, counter. So it's sort of a passive moment. Vipareti karani, yeah? Letting the weight of the legs sink into the hip sockets. They come overhead just as much as they need to, to counter the hips. A very gentle inversion, taking the heart over the head. Four. Five. Good. Feet overhead. And roll it down. Slow, slow, slow. Roll it down. Good. From here, kind of come up to sit. Cross the legs. Roll over into the hands. Walk your knees together, separating the feet for Virasana. Now, if you feel tight and restricted through the quads, hip sockets, knees, or even ankles, go ahead and use a block to sit on so that you can relax those muscles. If you're holding on at all, you're not going to get the benefits. So be able to sit down on something, block, pillow, book, whatever you have. Yeah? Let the soles of the feet face the ceiling, lengthening the ankles, bring the knees together, sit nice and tall through the spine. Arms up and overhead, little stretch, keep the shoulders drop, reach the pinky fingers back, two, three, four, five, reach it down, eagle arms, crossing, reach, pull the shoulder blades away from the spine, reach up through the fingers. And down, other side. Good. And down from here. If you're on a block, just take your hands behind you and see if you can lean into them. It depends on how high you've had to make your hips go, if you can get back into this position. When you've leaned back, lift a little, draw the tailbone under, lifting the pubic bone to lengthen the low back and lengthen the hip flexor. If you're on the block, stay here. If you're not on a block, see if you can lower yourself towards your elbows. And you may again need to adjust, sending the tailbone down, pulling the pubic bone up to lengthen this hip flexor space. If this is okay for you, maybe you go all the way down. Keep trying to lengthen the low back. Keep trying to lift the pubic bone and lengthen the hip flexors, dropping the belly. Don't let the ribs pop up. Let them sink and relax. You can take your arms overhead. Relax. Supta Virasana. Two more breaths. One more breath. If you're all the way lying down, take your hands to the soles of the feet, plant your elbows, and come up. Try to come up both at the same time. Then from there, come all the way up. Reset the pelvis. Knees might be screaming at you. It's okay. Tuck the toes under. Send it up to down dog. Let that blood flow through the knee joints again. Healthy, happy knees. Walk it out, whatever feels good to you here. And knee down. Knee down with crossed ankles. Roll back to sit. We're going to connect to our block. Uh, let's start with it. So lie down, feet flat to the floor, lift up like you're doing shoulder bridge, and grab this block. Put it right under the sacrum, the pelvis, not the low back, down here by the pelvis. Yeah, the flat part of the pelvis back there. Let the weight of the pelvis rest on it and reach your legs down and away, straight legs. So we get this stretch across the hip flexors and the low belly, the psoas muscle, the quadriceps, yeah? Relax. If you're feeling any compression in the low back, just scoot that block further down towards the tail, yeah? Ah, relax. Find Shavasana energy here. Two 
two more breaths. One more breath. Good, if you're sitting a lot through the day, you have a job at a desk or in the car, you have to commute, uh, this is a great way to just get into those hip flexors, yeah? Right before bed, let go of that tension. Good, next we're going to bring the block under the shoulder blades. So you might have to play around with the position a little bit. Set it where you think it might be and start to lay back on it. Move it up so that the ridge of the block is at the base of the shoulder blades. There you go. Yeah. And let your upper body hang above. So now we're getting a stretch in the upper back through the neck and shoulders. Arms either overhead or down at your sides, whatever is comfortable. The ribs are gonna pop forward a little bit, but don't engage in that direction. Do your best to just stay passive and hang in this arc. Make sure the bun isn't in the way. <laughs> Relax. Legs can be floppy, yeah? Four. If you feel you need more time here, just pause the video and take more time. Otherwise, use your elbows to press up. Move the block out of the way. Scoot, scoot. And lie flat. And now, you take Shavasana. <laughs> take Shavasana, stay in your rest as long as you like. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little restorative video, letting your body release just in time for bed <laughs> or to get some movement when you're not feeling so well. Thank you so much. Have a good day.